He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? It's an argument from the greater to the lesser, from the hard to the easy, from the insurmountable to the easily surmountable. And it goes like this. If he didn't spare his own son, which is an impossible thing to imagine, that he would hand his son over to butchery. If he could overcome the obstacle of his love for his son and thus kill him, nothing would stop him from fulfilling whatever goal he had in doing that. Because that's the hardest thing imaginable for God. What could be harder to imagine for God than to give His Son up to spitting and beating and a crown of thorns and lashes and nails and spear and mocking and rejection and betrayal and abandonment and lying and the burden of the sins of the world. What could be harder for God than to say, I will give my infinitely worthy son to that kind of horror. Nothing is harder for God to do than that. And Paul's reasoning is, if he could get over that obstacle to our salvation, nothing would stop him from giving us with him, which is good for us. I wonder if you believe that. He is for you always in all circumstances without any exceptions if you are in Christ. Never against us. None of our sicknesses is a penalty from a God who's against us. None of our broken cars or failed appliances is a punishment from God. None of our marital strife is a sign of His wrath. None of our lost jobs is a penalty for our sin. None of our wayward children is a crack of the whip of God's retribution. What an amazing difference it would make in our lives if we believe this. Look to Jesus. Love the cross. Live in love. And fear no more.